Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we help you understand and leverage your intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the success and failures of others and teach you how to win at the game of intellectual property. Here's the disclaimer. The information I provide in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice, and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. This week, we've been talking about trademarks, maximizing your trademark protection. We've covered the terrible versus terrific trademarks, who's first and why it matters for trademarks, how to use trademarks with the TM and the circle R and important trademark use tips. And now we're going to talk about don't lose your trademark, renewals and monitoring. Did you know that failing to renew your trademark can result in losing exclusive rights to your brand name and logo? So protecting your company's brand is crucial for maintaining a competitive edge in the marketplace. However, many business owners are not aware that trademarks must be regularly renewed and monitored to maintain their protection. In this episode, we will discuss the best practices for trademark renewals and monitoring so you can ensure that your brand remains protected. So here's the, the schedule for trademarks. For, for a federal trademark application, in the first, when it starts from when the day your trademark is registered, not when you apply, but when they finally issue a trademark registration certificate. From that date, you have six years to file a trademark renewal. And you can, the earliest you can file it is at five years. We encourage you to consider filing it as soon as you can at five years. And if you're working with us, we send you reminders well in advance of that. We've mentioned there are trademark scams, and it's easy for trademark or for companies that are employing these scams to know your renewal dates and send you things in the mail, making it sound like you have to work with them or that they are actually from the trademark office when they're not. Um, but as an attorney, when I represent somebody, even though it's five, six years down the road, we keep uh, we keep that on our calendar and we have reminders that go out before that. We have automated that to make sure uh, we don't forget that. That's set up. Um, we've set it and forget it and make sure we have it good before we forget it. So um, when, so in that, that first five to six year period, that's the first renewal. Then between the ninth and 10th year from that initial date. Um, so if you renew it the sixth year, then um, three years later, the ninth year renewal window will open and you have between the ninth and 10th years, you have a whole year to get this renewal done. Um, and we recommend to do it as soon as, as soon as you can, especially the five year, because when you have used a trademark for five years, you can file something called um, a request for incontestability status. I mentioned earlier on one of the episodes today that, that, that we went over this week, that when somebody, when, when somebody gets a trademark, someone else can still come when it's after it's registered, someone else can still come and say, you shouldn't the, to the trademark office, you, you shouldn't have registered that trademark because I've already been using it. I was using it before them and therefore we want it canceled. When the five years has run and you can renew your trademark at the same time, you can apply for incontestability status. If you qualify, which the vast majority of, of people do when they've made it to that point, and you file that, then it's too late for somebody else to come in and say, 
hey, wait a second, I was using that first. They've had five years of you being registered. But if you don't file that, um, and you can actually renew it five years without filing that incontestability status, if you don't qualify, then then you need to re renew without that. Um, and or if you wait until the near the end of the sixth year, when your time is, you know, the, the, the deadline's coming up and somebody steps in and says, wait a second, I, w I don't want them to have this trademark. I don't think they should have it. If you don't have that incontestability status, they still have the ability to say they were first and the trademark should be canceled because of it. And then there's a court proceeding. Um, so that's one of the reasons you want, especially at that five-year mark, to renew as soon as you can um, and to get that incontestability status. Now, so they have this one renewal in the first 10 years that's in, between the fifth and the sixth. But then after that, it's every 10 years from your registration date. So really between the ninth and 10th year, um, but the 10 years is the deadline. That's your deadline to renew your trademark. Every time you renew your trademark, you have to provide proof that you are still using the trademark in commerce, that you're actually selling products or services that are associated with that trademark and provide proof, which can be a screenshot from a website. It can be a picture of the product in packaging with the trademark um, or that uh, has the trademark associated with it in some way. Um, and so it's important that you know the, that, that you're working with somebody who knows the standards. And as court cases come out, the standards can change a bit of what needs to be done when there's a renewal. Um, trademarks many years ago, and you'll still see some trademarks out there that list just the long, long list of things that they're selling in their goods and services description. And if you aren't actually selling all of those goods and services, when you renew, you're supposed to remove the ones you're not, you're no longer selling. Um, and that's something that's newer, um, that without being up to date on the current standards, uh, trademark or, or an attorney who says, well, I know trademarks, I can file them. Um, they might miss that detail and, and have a weakness in your trademark that could come back to hurt you. So you want to make sure you are working with an experienced trademark attorney that is tracking your renewals. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, and that they'll, let you know. The other thing to do is to monitor your trademark. The trademark office doesn't send anyone out to search to see if someone else is using your trademark. Um, if somebody applies for a trademark and they think it's very similar to yours and is likely to cause confusion with yours, they will reject it based on your trademark being in their database, but they don't actively go out and search. I encourage that you do actually go out and search or have a search service. One of the free simple ones is uh, Google Alert. You can set up with a Google account, uh, a Google Alert that will email you whenever a term is, is new, newly used, and you can set up that term to be your trademark. And so you'll get an email whenever someone uses your trademark term. Um, and that way you can hopefully get early notice that there's a problem, that somebody else is starting to use your brand or causing confusion. It's very important to monitor your trademarks. If you are monitoring, and there's also, so the, the, the Google is the free one. There are also paid services uh, an attorney can set that up for you, or you can go directly to a company that does trademark monitoring searches, and 
They'll send you regular reports from their searching and um, find potential infringement issues. You want to take action on those quickly. When you have a trademark and you find somebody that's using it, if you were able to find them in the, in the first month or two of them using that brand, the chances are they will have invested a lot less money into that brand than if you don't find them for three or four years of them using the brand. And one of the purposes of monitoring a trademark is to keep your trademark strong and to, to minimize your battles with the trademark. The sooner you contact somebody and tell them you're using my trademark, the easier it will be for them to change and therefore they're less likely to fight a battle with you and try to find ways to uh, invalidate your trademark or do other things. If you do not monitor your trademark and there are a lot of, or even just one other people that for a long period of time use your trademark without your permission, the the courts can decide that you waited too long. And because you let them continue using your trademark, you can't enforce it against them and potentially even against other people. So you can actually lose your ability to enforce your trademark rights because you don't enforce your trademark rights. You don't want to wait until it's too late to renew your trademarks. And you also don't want to wait until it's too late to enforce your trademarks. As a reminder, you want to keep accurate records. Uh, one of the tips here is if you are using or if you find someone using your trademark on a website, don't just save the URL. Take a screenshot or print out that website, print it to PDF. Um, keep a copy of that website. What can happen is it can be kind of like whack-a-mole. Somebody will pop up and they'll be using your brand and you'll find them and they'll go away and you weren't sure who it was, but then they pop up somewhere else. If you can capture each of those different times where they're using your trademark, you have a stronger case and stronger ability to stop them and potentially get damages from them uh, with a court ordering damages. Next week, we're going to talk about design patents, the value of them, the best case uses, the enforcement, and the defense from design patents. I'm Wayne Carroll with Leveraging Inspiration. What does a, a petrol or diesel cost, diesel vehicle cost to lease per month? Um, and, you know, what then the, the cost